Okay, what I want to demonstrate here is how you can uh, add a biped to this character mesh, which is right now unwrapped, textured, but other than that is not rigged. So we'll rig this using the biped rig that comes in 3D Studio Max, and uh, I just want to show you a couple different ways to do that. So this thing is selected. Let's check um, how tall it is because this is the kind of thing we want to set up ahead of time. Now this particular character mesh I got from the CD that comes with my book Creating Game Art for 3D Engines. Where you get your character mesh isn't important. You, you know, create it yourself, texture it, get it all ready to go and then we're going to set it up in the right orientation and the right height and in this case I'm going to set it up for the Unity game engine. Uh, so you can read about that at unity3d.com very nice game engine and that's what we're going to shoot for in this example but everything I show you with how to rig this stands on its own it would it would apply to setting up for any game engine the only things that are going to be different here is the orientation of the character and the height of the character so if uh, if I create a little box here okay that box is a little over two meters high let me do it again. You can see that. So what that means is this thing is set up, um, the reason for that is this is set up for the torque game engine currently. We're going to take this mesh and change it so it's set up for Unity. Here's how to do it. First I'm just going to spin it around. So just select it, rotate it around 180 degrees. Get rid of the helmet, we don't really even need that. Uh, and then we're going to go to customize unit setup and instead of using metric as we would for torque I'm going to go to generic units and hit OK. And this is how I do it. This isn't the only way you could do it. But uh, I'll scale this up. Well, actually let's get something to judge by. We'll say this is 200 units high. So now I'm going to scale my character up so he's the same height as that. So I'll just go to scale and move them out of the way see where we're going and looks pretty good so now delete that and let's go get a biped so I'll go to create systems on the right the little gears biped is our object type and what do we want what I usually like is the defaults of one neck link, two spine links, three leg links, uh, one finger link, one toe link. Defaults are pretty good. And the main thing I usually check is I want two spine links. And the height I want on this is about 200 units high. And we'll just draw that. Let's adjust that to 200 again. And let's go to G for grid so we can see our grid. And let's move this. Now this thing is created. What I like to do is go into mo um, motion panel. It's a fourth panel over. looks like a little wheel. And come down to figure mode. Under biped you've got a thing called figure mode. looks like a little man. Now we'll take that and just move this guy to where it's lined up. In fact, usually I'll set it so that the feet are right on that axis line. Can come up just a scotch. And centered. And I'm not going to be worried too much about it because we can tweak it later. Okay, let's go ahead and do the same thing with our character mesh. And let's see how well these two line up. Now the character mesh, we're not going to really be doing anything with it right now, so what I like to do is go to Object Properties and freeze it and say that it's see-through at the same time. So that way it's just there as a ghost for me to work off of. That way I can also click these bones without any problem. Now, the next objective is to, uh, well, let's go to Edged Faces. I do want to see the edged faces on this character mesh because 
that shows me where the knee joint would be, for instance. Because of the way that I built the mesh, I can see a little line for elbows and all that. And you may want to do the same thing when you're creating your character mesh. Give yourself little cues to where the bend joints are so that you can use those to line up your bones or your biped structure. So anyway, um, right now we're still in uh, the motion panel, we're in figure mode, and in figure mode you're just kind of setting up your figure so that it lines up with your uh, mesh. Now I can also go to wireframe and sometimes that's useful because it will let me grab the BIP01 bone, which is it's the kind of the mother bone for all this bone structure. Now one of the things I like to do also, or you have to do for Unity, is change the name of that to root joint. So I'm going to go ahead and get that out of the way. Now I can move it around a little bit. Um, you can see that it's a little too tall. Shoulders are too high. Don't, don't worry about the head at this point. Hips are a little too high. Knees are too high. So that means we probably need to change the character mesh unless we want to change the size of our biped. So I'll go to unfreeze all. I'll grab this and we'll just make that a little bit bigger. And we got to move it up, and this becomes a little bit painstaking. It can take a little while. The knees are not too bad, the hips are not too bad, the shoulders are off. So, uh, why don't we just make this a little bit smaller? And move it down and see how it looks. Knees are right on. And I'm not going to go into excruciating detail with this one because it would just take too much time to fit on a video. And in reality, it takes a little bit longer to do this stuff. So anyway, grab the pelvis. And we are in figure mode, right? Let's make sure we're in figure mode. And I'm just going to scale that pelvis out because the legs need to, the bones of the leg need to come out to where they're centered in the meat of each leg. Okay, so there's a lot of flesh on either side. It's not too bad. Uh, the shoulders now. Let's just take this spine and lengthen it out a little bit. I'm going to keep them both about the same size, so we'll lengthen this one too. And you can see the socket joint of this shoulder. I'm going to take it out to about here, so it's about the right size. And let's just take both of these. I use my control key to select them both and just scale them out on the x-axis using that scale gizmo. And now I'm going to spin this arm out how many degrees? About 10 degrees. Same thing on this one. Those need to be longer, don't they? So let's grab them both and use the scale tool, the x axis, until the elbow is lined up with the elbow joint. And I think I made that right here. And uh, forearms need to be a little bit longer. And the hands need to spin. 